So what I've done so far now is skin this hind limb down to about the hock. And I just want to show you some of these structures before we move on. Right here we've got a triangular shaped muscle that's coming up and actually attaching on the ilium. And it's got this deep femoral fascia associated with it. That deep femoral fascia is also known as the fascia lata. And since this muscle tenses that fascia lata, that's the tensor fascia lata muscle. Okay, and that's going to act in extending the stifle. It also, since it crosses the hip, it flexes the hip. Okay. Adjacent to it here, I've cleaned off a lot of this gluteal fascia so we can see the middle gluteal muscle here. And then in the ruminant, we don't have a superficial gluteal muscle. It's basically associated in with the biceps femoris. And so we often call this whole muscle then the gluteal biceps. And that's going to have multiple functions, both to extend and flex the stifle, extend the hip, as well as extend the hock. And then this muscle, just caudal to the gluteal biceps, is the semitendinosus. And then we have the semimembranosus here. And then we'll have the gracilis around on that medial side. We'll get to that later. Okay? The biceps femoris, or the gluteal biceps in this case, the semitendinosus and the semimembranosus all act to extend the hip, and the semitendinosus is also going to flex the stifle and extend the hock. So now what I've done here is I've cut away the origin of the gluteal biceps from its attachment along the vertebrae and along the sacrosciatic ligament and reflected that away. We've got a little lymph node right there. It's probably the ischiatic lymph node. We'll clean up these vessels here and I've better isolated here the middle gluteal muscle. Okay. And so we're next going to transect this and reflect that out to better expose this ischiorectal fossa in here and the sacrosciatic ligament. I want to take a moment and show you this right here. I've started cutting away the middle gluteal. And we can see this nerve running through it. And this nerve here is the cranial gluteal nerve, which is going to innervate the deep gluteal, the middle gluteal, as well as the tensor fascia lata. You can see it running right into the tensor fascia lata there. Pretty cool. So now here I've transected the middle gluteal muscle and we can see this portion here that is the accessory gluteal muscle. And if we reflect that, we're going to find down here at the greater trochanter of the femur a trochanteric bursa. It's not real prominent in the goat, but it is much more so in the horse. Okay? And then this here is the deep gluteal muscle. And you can see here coming out through the greater sciatic foramen, the cranial gluteal nerve that innervated this muscle as well as this muscle and this muscle, so the middle gluteal, the deep gluteal, and the tensor fascia lata. And also coming through here, the cranial gluteal arteries. And then here we have the sciatic nerve. Okay. So if we look here at this goat skeleton, we can see this is the greater ischiatic notch and the lesser ischiatic notch. And that sacrosciatic ligament is going to attach along here and cross over to attach to the iliac crest here as well as the ischiatic tuberosity. But it doesn't connect here and here creating the greater ischiatic foramen and the lesser ischiatic foramen in those respective notches. 
So coming through here, we have the sciatic nerve, as well as the cranial gluteal vessels and nerve. And then through the lesser, we're going to just see the caudal gluteal vessels come through it. Okay. Now if we were to come over here to the equine, notice that the equine is much more upright. And so in our greater ischiatic foramen, we're going to have the sciatic nerve and the cranial gluteal vessels. But if we come straight across like this, we're going to see that that caudal gluteal artery and vein are going to come through that sacrosciatic ligament, not through the lesser ischiatic foramen. Okay? So now we can look right here, see our greater ischiatic foramen, and we've got the cranial gluteal vessels and nerves as well as the sciatic nerve coming through. For some reason, I don't see the caudal gluteal nerve, which usually is running right here, going into these muscles here. But we can come back here, and we can see the lesser ischiatic foramen with the caudal gluteal vessels coming through. Okay? So now we're going to cut this sacrosciatic ligament along here. So now if we pull back this sacrosciatic ligament, we see here just on its medial border the pudendal nerve. Okay. Pudendal nerve wants to come down and join the internal pudendal artery. And so we see this artery coming through here. Now remember the internal iliac does not become the internal pudendal until that caudal gluteal comes off. So this is just internal iliac still and it comes down here and right about here I don't know if I can show this real well here right about here we can see where the caudal gluteal comes off and the internal pudendal continues and so that caudal gluteal is coming out here through that lesser sciatic foramen. Okay? And these muscles right here, probably part of the external anal sphincter, and so somewhere along in here we should have the caudal rectal nerve going. Okay? So that's what we got.